tonight's meeting of the Armada Village Council. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, I want to thank the roll call. Shaw. Here. Clark. Here. Conan. everybody want to do? Well, how about we go into it and yeah, see what they have and what can we have motion to postpone? Right. Right. We'll, we'll discuss it at the, at the time. Right. Sounds good to me. Okay. Okay, uh, we have a motion to approve the agenda. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion to approve. Are there any citizen comments? Yes, Kevin. Okay, one moment, because this kind of changed things up. I thought you guys were going to be discussing this tonight, but I'll discuss it, I'll discuss it anyway. Okay, these are my comments on tonight's agenda item. Uh, let me start off with this quote. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for protected, and handed on for them to do the same. For one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. I originally scoffed at Ronald Reagan's warning that such a thing could ever happen here in our republic. At the time, I felt that political leadership would never dare to make such a move because they would fear what would happen to them from the American citizens. Fast forward to today, where political leaders are becoming more and more emboldened to see what they can get away with. You can see this happening in France, where Telegram CEO Pavel Durov was arrested because he wouldn't let the French government wiretap his platform's users who happened to offend the same government. You can see it in Britain, where the government will arrest you if you write something on social media that their politicians find objectionable. You can see it in Brazil, where the government has outright banned Twitter and Rumble because the politicians do not want, do not like what people can read and see. Do you think that this cannot happen here? At the challenges to democracy in the Digital Information Realm Conference held in 2022, when addressing the subject of misinformation on social media, Barack Obama said, "These decisions affect all of us." <laughs> And just like every other industry that has a big impact in our society, that means these big platforms need to be subject to some level of public oversight and regulation. Vice Presidential Candidate Tim Welch said in an interview not too long ago that there is, or excuse me, there is no guarantee to free speech. And last month, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg told the House Judici Judiciary Committee that his company's moderators faced significant pressure from the Biden administration to censor content on Facebook and Instagram. Ronald Reagan's warning is becoming more and more prophetic. Erosion of free speech is increasing at an alarming rate. So how does this tie into tonight's agenda item? You have an agenda item whose language clearly infringes upon the freedom of speech here in Armada. Some of you will cite as rationale for supporting the agenda item as written, a Supreme Court which allegedly supports this position. How many of you sitting at this table have actually read the entire Reed versus Gilbert case? This is for you to talk. Uh, That's correct. Yeah. This is a rhetorical question. I'm, a, I'm aware. Thank you. If you did, then you would know that the question before the court had nothing to do with political signage. That case strictly dealt with a local church and the signs its pastor had placed around the community promoting his church's services. To the best of my knowledge, and trust me, I did look a lot, there is no specific Supreme Court cases involving political signs. With no specific case law to draw upon, where does this board go next? The answer is easy. You go to the U.S. Constitution. 
something everyone at this table had taken an oath to defend before assuming office. The First Amendment is very clear on this subject. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government and a redress of grievances. Can anyone at this table provide me with any exclusions or exemptions from the amendment I had just read? <coughs> The question that you have before you tonight is this. Do you support the First Amendment? If the answer is yes, and you do support our First Amendment, I do hope that you keep President Reagan's warning in mind and make the correct decision this evening. That concludes my comments. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, are there any other uh, citizen comments? There are no other comments. Uh, we have no presentations to tonight. Uh, administrative report. Uh, who would like to go first? Okay. This is the Armada Police Department Police Action Report for August 2024. Traffic tickets issued were 52, that's including the fair time. Uh, resist and obstruct arrest. One in the fair. Control while license suspended. One in the fair. Assist Armada Township Fire Department inside the building. Five. Domestic assault arrest. One. Assist other agencies. Three. Wooden Comb County Sheriff in Armada Township. Suspicious situations. Three. Civil dispute. Two. Dog or animal complaints. Zero. Disturbance. One. Alarm before an open door. Three. Domestic disturbance, one. Lockout, three. Death investigation, one. Juvenile related, four. Damaged property, one. Mental distress situation, zero. Warrants for arrest, zero. Miscellaneous calls for service, eight. Missing person, two. Lost and found property, four. Theft, zero. Retail fraud, one. Internet fraud, two. <coughs> Motor vehicle accidents, zero, as of August 21st, 2024. Miles on a patrol car, 431, equal 105,588 miles. 432, the F-150, equal 41,956 miles. 433, the unmarked Dodge, equal 64,022 miles. All Army officers have completed the state required and full firearms requirements for 2024. Paper training has been completed. All the new police radios have been delivered, which include in-car, desktop, and in-the-station portable. Um, our main fair report. Okay, our fair report. 51 tickets were issued. Oh, okay, let's go down to the fair. One arrest in lodged at the Macomb County Jail for resist and obstruct for the police officer. One citation for drug drove while license suspended, a cross complaint for assault inside the beer tent. I have this incident under investigation by the chief. A juvenile who reported that his carnival ride wristband was taken by another juvenile. <laughs> the victim has not returned several phone calls I have made to him. Again, I being the police chief. Two cars were towed for parking in front of driveways on the complaint <coughs> of the homeless. Okay. Um, Mike? Nothing from the planning commission. Okay. I'm good. You're good? I, I have a little update on mm -hmm. Simons and First Street. Okay. Um, Telto is bringing their equipment in the week of September 16th, and then they're going to start work shortly after. We don't know exactly when. Um, and I asked Paul to work on letters for the residents for each street to inform them about parking, garbage, pickup, and mail. And those letters were given to me and Michelle um, asked Dave to hand them out, hand them out to everyone today. So, so everybody is pretty much informed on what's going on, and let's hope it all goes smoothly. Uh, Ross? Uh, just, just a few items tonight. Um, state mandated... Uh, water sampling 
program has been completed. That includes the lead and galvanized line issues that we've been uh, dealing with, uh, or talking about rather, over the last uh, couple of meetings. Hydrovac activities is complete, so that allows me now to work on the three state uh, reports required for um, reporting on lead service lines. Um, I think the grant writer that we have has been in touch with Amy on speed projects. Um, uh, providing information to Roe for the rela water reliability and wellhead studies. They're working that and then we're going to talk to solve the one issue. Okay, that's all I've got. So, like, okay. like, like I've got a couple of things. Yes, go ahead. Steve. The uh, dump truck is up and running. They've been using it today. Uh, but have a new little problem that's going to get straightened out. The salt dome is up and they got their delivery. The salt is in it. Dave was then emptying the DPW building of the salt in there. We do have a couple of questions on how the flaps are on the corners of that. We're going to have a meeting with Orchard to see if we can rectify a couple of things. And uh, that's all I've got. It's in, the, it's in the back if you want to take a look at it. Yeah, it's how the back and the it, just, wraps it doesn't quite look right. Yeah. I don't know if it'll affect the overall. I you think know, you might have a more there issue if you leave it as is. Yeah. So, Steve, yeah. you said what about the dump truck? I'm sorry. The dump truck is up and running, okay. but we now have a hydraulic leak. And uh, the but, police car is too. Uh, yeah. Last week, when you know you were gone, I know they got that transmission fixed. Okay, thank you, Steve. Yep. So. Wait, I'm, um, oh, I'm sorry. I just want to. Um, and this is no criticism of you, Stacy, but um, the article that went out in the paper about the, the um, section of Simons that wasn't included in the yeah. um, thing, unfortunately implied that we were doing somebody's driveway. We are not doing that resident's driveway. That is a part of the street that we receive Act 51 money for. It is a part of the street that, um, that she pays taxes on, although there is only one resident there. Um, it's still a street. Um, her driveway butts into the street. Um, it's a it's a narrow street, but it is a street. So it's not a driveway that we did for a resident. It is absolutely part of the street. And unfortunately, um, it's um, oh, I lost my train of thought. But anyways, it's it is part of the street. It was missed in the in the beginning stages of the planning, unfortunately. But now we've corrected it. So. It is not a driveway. Yeah, it, is, it is absolutely part of the street. Can you have anything? Just that uh, you noticed the budget amendments are not in your packet today. I didn't get the final bill on the dump truck. It didn't come until Friday, so it was too late to get those in. But I will have it next time along with the transmission costs for the police car and anything else that we've done. Will all be okay. Well, you know, like... Don't we, we have a certain amount of area, it, like for repairs and things, that might cover some of that. It, it, both these two with the truck and with the police car, but it's Yeah, I don't think we budgeted that much. No. It was it was big ticket and items. I didn't want to <clears throat> do an amendment, and then as it was, the the actual cost of fixing the truck was over $2,000 more than let, the estimate. Now, so. Let me ask you, would we... <laughs> Would it be better, you know, we're going to have other repairs coming, like if we waited till like February to make the budget adjustments, so, you know, so you're final for March 31st. I'm just saying, I'm just, I, I'm just asking that question, I'm not saying we should do that. Right, that technically you should get your budget amended before you're spending the money. Jeff's agreeing with me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we try to do them closer to the yeah. actual cost in being incurred. That's why you're the treasurer. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, no other uh, administrative reports? Um, okay. Moving on to general business. Uh, consent agenda. Approval of our minutes. Payment of our bills. And, and, of the, last and the 812 minutes. What, what got changed in those? Um, the only thing that got changed was um, that Kevin did not say the court case Jeff did. So I oh, fixed it. Okay. I, I oh, watched the oh, meeting and couldn't okay. that. We requested the change. <clears throat> okay. 
Well, we wouldn't normally do it for a resident, so we had to make sure that it, how it was said in the meeting. Yeah. Okay. So. I still appreciate it. So, uh, I still appreciate it. Uh, you're so, could uh, I have a motion for the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Supported. Motion by Clark, supported by Bell. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those motions approved. No old business to discuss. Moving on to new business. Approval of the zoning amend ad amendments. We have had a uh, public hearing on this. Um, maybe you would like to speak a little bit on this, Jeff? Well, I'm sure. sure let Ross ask his questions. <laughs> well, I thought he would yeah. speak and then okay. after he got done, any of the council could, you know. Yeah, I, I just. I guess I'll reiterate what I said at the, just before the public hearing, and that um, this has been a, a significant undertaking that's been vetted both by the planning commission, uh, the planning consultant, um, and Becky summarized a lot of the changes for me, which helped out greatly. Um, so it's hard to, because of the number of changes, it's hard to highlight any one of them, uh, Dave, you know, in, in particular. Um, so I think last time the strategy was to give everybody on council an opportunity to read the rather lengthy ordinance and then come prepared tonight um, with any questions or proposed amendments. Um, and we did have some questions prior that we yes. had sent back to the planning commission. Um, so yep. So there's been a lot of a lot of input. We had the public hearing, which was. Um, the opportunity for businesses and residents to comment on the ordinance. I don't believe we had any, Michelle. We had um, just, Kevin, yeah, just Kevin had the yep. resident. Yep. So, uh, like I said, this has been pretty thoroughly vetted, and um, it's uh, probably the most significant rewrite we've had since uh, 2000 when I think the original ordinance was yeah, adopted. Quite a while, wasn't it? Yeah. So, does the council have any questions? I know you do, Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the um, probably should have been <coughs> a little bit sooner. Uh, this seemed to be the time to do it. So, the as you recall, the zoning board of appeals um, spent a certain amount of time, about three meetings, and some amount of money to get everybody together to go through the uh, chapter 24, which is the ZBA component to look at issues that the board, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals has had. Not generally looking at the rest of the uh, zoning ordinance because that's the purview of the Planning Commission. But um, we looked at issues that uh, we've had problems with in the past and were concerned about and wanted to put some clarification into that specific chapter. We provided uh, the Planning Commission with about uh, 10 to 12, I'm just um, uh, paraphrasing here and I can count them up, 10 to 12 changes, some bigger, some smaller, maybe one or two happy to glads, but again, this is based upon um, issues that the Zoning Board of Appeals has had in the past with language, interpretations, where we're trying to clarify, and in some cases, um, there was one case where the Zoning Enabling Act said we would specifically put something in uh, our ordinance, and there was another um, component where McKenna commented on the uh, transitional overlay district and wanted the wholesale change a section in the in uh, Chapter 24, Section 24, and we had no problem with it. We wanted to be in compliance with. Uh, what that said, and council had approved that. Um, I don't see many, uh, really any at all, perhaps one of the recommended changes. Now, um, interesting thing was Christy, the president of the uh, planning commission, uh, was a member of the zoning board of appeal. She approved all of this, got to the uh, uh, planning commission, planning commission over time, I guess has looked at this. We never did get a indication back of whether or not we had any questions. We were um, whether or not we felt something was more important than another. Um, any comments back to any of our submissions? <laughs> um, but in the final uh, 
update. None of what we had provided and took the time and effort to do has been put in here. And that's, I'd like to discuss some of it. I did talk to Becky today about some of it. I think I understand the reason why she had suggested a reason why, but, um, uh, and, and it does make sense to me what she suggested. I don't want to go into it here. But, uh, again, if what we're trying to do is gain clarification on some of uh, the current issues we see or issues that we have had in the past and we've tripped over, um, then I'd like to find out why that's not in here. I did talk to Dennis, I'm just the secretary of the board. Uh, I did talk to Dennis. Dennis said, go ahead and bring it up. He didn't say whether he supported it or not, uh, but he said, go ahead and bring it up. So uh, that would be the reason why I would ask for a two week de delay just to understand if. Any of the issues that we provided to the Planning Commission should in fact be put in there or, um, or not. Okay. Ross, can I just jump in real quick? Sure. So, so I can't speak to all of, it sounded like you had like nine or ten, I can't speak yeah. to all of them. The sheet that I got, which I think came from the Planning Commission, had uh, two or three changes. So one um, is reflected, if everybody looks at page 42 of your ordinance, that's where chapter 24, I believe, is amended. That's good, yeah. Uh, there were two others that I recall on the, uh, on the list that Becky did recommend. One was to reduce the size of the ZBA, but when I looked at prior ordinances that that's already been done. So that just so you know, that one has been taken care of. That was adopted back in, I want to say, 2017 or 2018. The council adopted that amendment. So that, that's why that one didn't make it into here. The last one that I can recall, Ross, was dealt with, there was some language that talked about trying to define the powers of the ZBA, specifically with regard to interpreting uh, the ordinance and things like that. And the reason I talked to Becky about it, and I think the consensus was that really is the, the powers of the ZBR, as you said, are, are defined by state law. And there's already a pretty good provision already in the zoning ordinance as to what the powers are. So we felt rather than tinkering with that, we would rely on first and foremost state law, which supersedes. And then we yeah. felt that it was on the books already. Yeah, I, I don't. We, yeah, I don't want to get into the right debate here. Um, the um, there was a specific part of the Zoning Enabling Act that says it needed to be put into or updated in the um, in the, pla the zoning ordinance. And as of the latest update back in what was 2011 or whatever it was, it was not made. There was a reference at the very last page, and again the. The zoning board is trying to find the relative information to whatever the case is that's in front of them. They're not um, digging through the 250 pages of the document. And um, I think some of them were surprised when I pointed out that right at the very end it says, and any updates, which maybe is where that is um, nestled, right, is that, uh, that um, that part of it, but we were trying to um, we were trying to bolster up um, uh, section 24. I don't want to call it chapter 24; it's section 24. Um, bolster up section 24 so that new members, and again, it's tough to get members uh, on the zoning board of appeals, didn't have to look through the entire document to find uh, where their authority lied and what the requirements of their job was. So. That's why we wanted to bolster that um, and put that information in there. But I appreciate what you're saying. If it's elsewhere in the document, it's just incumbent upon somebody in the ZBA to know that it's elsewhere in the document. Yeah, I just, I, I just, the problem you have is, I understand the thought process to get it uh, in the ordinance, but that kind of gives the impression that council can change those powers that that really are set by statute. So. I think you were trying to make it easier on the members, but we just felt like you know, I didn't want council to think that you can recreate what the powers of the ZBA are. That's defined, and, and no matter what you right. write up, you only yeah. No, I, 
I follow. Questions. I don't. Yeah. I don't think that that was our intent. I don't think anybody felt that way. But no, I, I know. You were just trying to show them in one check. <laughs> so, yeah, this is what we do, right? right? But I just felt like, you know, does that really? Your powers are what your powers are, and you can put in the ordinances. You know, you can grant all kinds of powers, but unfortunately, you only have the powers that are given to you. So yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and I don't think there was any argument right. there. It was to ensure everybody understood what, in fact, their authority was and what it was not. Right. So you'd like to hold it up for a couple Well, of I just, I would, I, think that I would just do it. one, 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 um, uh, one, hold it to the next meeting. I guess is what I'm trying to say, just to be able to have a conversation with Mike and um, Jeff about some of these issues. Um, and I can appreciate the perspective that uh, Jeff has got um, and maybe that's the way the rest of this goes. It's just we really didn't get um, much of a discussion or information back to the Zoning Board of Appeals as to why um, the effort we put into this was was really not uh, undertaken, why we didn't uh, put much uh, thought into making these changes. So, so, so Rob, just so yes. clear, you had more changes than what even made it down to Becky's list of amendments. Uh, it sounds like. Yeah, okay. And, and um, I only saw what what had gone through. Yeah, years. and so it may be uh, just a mis miscommunication. There, um, here, here's a simple example. We've got one in here about um, um, sign removal. There's, there's a component in there about sign removal on notification um, by the village uh, by the village to the uh, zoning board of appeals, but there's information that is lacking there as to um, who's, whose purview is it, who do we go to talk to, why do we make that decision instead of a building inspector or a code enforcer? Is this things that we'll, we should go in this ordinance? Uh, I may not have seen that, Dave, to be honest. I, no. I, was, I mean, sign removal. Uh, yeah, that's just an example. Yeah, that's a, one of the things. I guess have. I'd like to know what the pleasure of the council is. Do you want to put, you know, do you want to put it off for two weeks? Do you want to uh, vote on it now? What, what would you like to do? I don't have a problem waiting two more weeks, just um, for clarification. So. Yeah, I'm fine there, there's things that, that aren't in here that we should be reviewing. Okay, now. I would like, I just need to, there is, I know one for sure business owner that is waiting for this to pass in order to move forward, if not two, but I know there's one. So just, just so you guys know. I, um, <laughs> but I point out that the board has already delayed it a certain amount of time. So uh, two more weeks, I wouldn't think would make a difference here in this case, just to get Sure, everybody is happy with the, yeah. the language, and I think we owe it to the Zoning Board of Appeals who put the time and effort into it to take a look at this. If it's, if but again, you know, you guys have to have this information for eight weeks. Yeah. 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 Well, Ross, yeah. yeah. make, make a motion to postpone. All right. Uh, uh, well, I would make a motion then to postpone adoption of the Zoning Board. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the. Um, Zoning ordinance the revisions uh, until the next council meeting. Um, okay, two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. We got motion we by a postpone well, adoption of the zoning ordinance until revisions until what's the date? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, well, the 23rd. Until 9 23 24 hours now. Okay. And, I, and I will work with Jeff and, and I, you know, just want to, well, wait, we got to get, we don't have a second. Yes. If it's a second. Okay. Yeah. Um, keep your copy here. So she's not going to run another copy. We're not going to kill a bunch of her trees. Thank you. Um, now, go ahead, Joe. Page 43. Your name is Bill Brown. Hey. <laughs> well, we can. Get that correct. Yeah, that, we can that. Do I need to give you my business card? <laughs> okay. Oh, to be. So, um, all in all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Me motion. I oppose it. Thank you all. Okay. Motion's uh, approved. Okay.
Okay, upcoming agenda items. Of course, we have the zoning ordinance. I want to put on our grant writing guidelines. Okay, grant writing guidelines. <coughs> Any other upcoming agenda items? There'll be budget amendments. Budget amendment. Any other? Okay. Citizen comments. Do I have any citizen comments? I'm good. I'm good. You're good? She's good. <laughs> Everybody's good. You're good? I can't speak for her, though. Hey, we got a good bunch. Um, are there any council comments? Or uh, yeah, any council comments? Okay, community events. When is, okay. I don't know the date, that's why I wasn't going to say it. Oh. <laughs> End of the month. I, have we heard anything from our, our maid again? I just got the... There's again. stuff on Facebook of that, but... I just got the application and the chief asset. It'll come back to the next meeting. Okay. Okay, well, um, no closed session. Uh, I would take a motion. I'll make a motion at to adjourn the meeting at 7:33. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Adjourned. Aye.